What's up everybody? Welcome back to the video series. I'm Kevin Walsh from Ninja Holistic Health and Fitness. We're looking at flexibility and posture this month and for this particular week I'm going to dive into finding and stretching tight muscles. So this is nine stretches right here that I've got outlined that I'm going to go over with you. Uh, basically you can do these to kind of unwind yourself top to bottom. I recommend trying every single one of these stretches and testing out your muscles to see what's tight and if you do happen to get a significant stretch in any of these, which you likely will in uh, many of them, then you want to add this to your arsenal and do this on a regular basis. On uh, week four, I'll give you an actual action plan of how many repetitions to do for each one of these, how to figure out uh, if your left side or right side is tighter, etc. So I'll give you kind of like the basics of just how to do the stretch today. So this is just a run through. The first thing we're going to do is the thoracic foam roll mobilization. And what that is, is basically you take this device here, or this little tool, a uh, foam roller, if you've never seen one before. They're in pretty much every gym, everywhere that you go. And this is a tiger tail. It's a little different than most of the others. A lot of them are kind of long like this. They're high density foam rollers. Um, but you can find these at, again in any gym and I highly recommend buying one too. So if you go to Amazon and you type in high density foam roller, you can get one for like 20 bucks. This is the best chiropractor you'll ever have in your house. So what you do is you put this under the back. All right, like so. Put the fingers together and then you're going to put them right behind the neck like this. And with the butt and the feet pinned to the ground at all times, you just gently lay back. Just make sure I'm in the camera here. Gently lay back and gravity takes over and will sort of gently push into the thoracic spine to mobilize it. And then you come right back up like this. And typically you want to do about two to three times on any given vertebrae. So if you happen to have a posture that's rounded like this, this is the perfect way to unwind that. So if you have a doedger's hump or generally walk around with a little bit of a, uh, a slouch, this will help to bring the shoulders back to realign the thoracic spine. And it may very well even take away a lot of low back pain if you have any in the uh, lumbar spine. Now next, we are gonna do the uh, pec minor. So this is a stretch for the chest. And this actually goes in line with the thoracic mobilization. If you tend to be hung here, chances are you're going to be tight in this muscle as well. So what you do is you go on all fours. You're going to take this ball and put the elbow right on top, shoulder directly across, and then from here sink down with an exhale. Like that. And that's going to give you a really good stretch right here. Again, this tends to get tonic and tight on most people. So give this a shot and test this out to see if it's tight on you on both the left and the right sides. Uh, the next is the child pose. This is a very common one in the, the yoga. So what you do is you go sit on your hip, knees are right in front, and you're just gonna stretch out with your hands like so. And this is a nice stretch for the lower back and also for the thoracic uh, area as well, just to give an elongation to that whole area. And this you can just sort of sit back as far as you can and then go forward from that point if you can only get to right here a lot of people don't quite have the flexibility to go all the way down that's perfectly fine do what you can and then this will uh will give you a nice little unwind particularly if you've been sitting a lot during the day all right next is the upper traps so back with the ball here what you do is you sit on the ball and then the hands are going to be by the sides so get a nice tall posture chin tucked keep everything aligned and then what you do is you take your right ear, I'm gonna do the stretch the left side, you take your right ear to the right shoulder, like this. So that's the side angle, so you can see from there. And then this is an angle from the front. So it's the same thing. And then try and keep your shoulders as level as possible without letting one side get hiked up, which is common. And uh, if you do it in front of a mirror, that's the best way to ensure that this doesn't get hiked. Otherwise, there's a tendency to let it go up. So that right there is going to stretch out the upper trapezius. That's the muscle right here, which again, tends to go in line uh, in terms of tightness with the pec minor and the uh, thoracic spine. So if you have a posture that's sort of folded like this, again, this is going to be in need of the foam roller. This is going to be in need of being unwound. And you're probably also gonna have some tightness here because these get sort of um, coiled over time, especially if you're at the computer. So again, those three stretches, the foam roll mobilization, the pec minor, and then the upper trapezius, highly recommend for anybody who's at the computer all day. All right, next, 
the posterior rotator cuff, what you do here is you're gonna take the elbow, oh, I'm sorry, the, uh, the right arm, hook the left elbow right underneath, and then you're going to pull across like so. So this is the free side, the right hand for me here, and I'm stretching all this right back here. Okay? You might also get a little bit of a stretch further back in the rhomboid. But this is great for the posterior rotator cuff and the posterior deltoid. Next, the hip flexors. To get the hip flexors, you're going to go into a position right here. Left foot in front, right foot in back. First, tilt the pelvis under. So you sort of pull the belly button in, rotate the pelvis underneath, squeeze the uh, right side glute, and then translate the body weight forward just a little bit so that you get a nice stretch right here in the groin, in the, in the hip flexor. From there, the next step is you put, again, my left leg is forward. You put the left hand on that knee. This hand goes on the head. And you tilt to the side, to the left, like so. And this will give a really, really great stretch through all of this right here. The whole complex on that right side, the hip flexor, the psoas, little of the adductors, and the obliques, they all get stretched um, in that position. Uh, next is hamstrings. So you're on the back like this. And while you're laying in this position, the left leg will start with that. You're going to bring that up. Hands are clasped right here, right behind the leg. And then you just push the foot up toward the sky like that. And this will stretch the hamstrings in the back. And what you can also do in this position is just point it inward like so. This will get the lateral side of the hamstrings over here on the outside. And if I go the other direction, outside like this, this will actually stretch the inside hamstrings, the medial hamstrings. So you have two sets of them. Depending on the position, you can kind of stretch them one way or the other. Um, and again, test them out and see which one is a little tighter. For most people, the ones on the outside are tighter, but that could be obviously subjective and, and different depending on what you do day to day. Last two, quads and adductors. So for the quads, there's a couple ways you can do this. One is sitting back like this on the hips, on the butt, and then from here, crawling your hands back like so and lifting the hip up a little bit. And this will give a really, really deep stretch right there into the quadriceps. And this stretches them both at the same time. Another one you can do, which is slightly more advanced, but definitely worthwhile if you can do it, if you get into the position. I have the Swiss ball right here, right? And my right foot is on top. The knee is gonna be directly under the hip or close to it. And then the other foot is in front. Now. When you get into this position, this is a little tricky to get into, I want you to start here, right? Because this is gonna give you, this is gonna give you quite a stretch, so be careful when you do this. Now, from this position, you may already have the stretch in the quadricep on that right side. If you do, then you're home free and you don't need to go anywhere from here. If you need a little bit extra and you're not getting as much of a stretch in this position, what you do is you just climb your way up like this, gently, to the point at which you start to get a stretch in here. And wherever along the way you feel it, you just stop right there, hold it, and then come back out. And to come out of the stretch, you just sort of lean forward like this. This will release the whole, uh, release the whole stretch. And then this is optimal range of motion here at the top. Now, remember, again, not everybody can get to this position. This is, you know, going to take you some time to, to work into. So if you feel the stretch right here, then you're all good. If not, climb a little further up toward the top. All right, and the very last one that we've got for the day is the adductors, or I like to call this the goalie save stretch. So it reminds me of Martin Brodeur back in the 90s when he would do these little whoosh with his uh, New Jersey Devils. So what you do is the left hand is gonna be the same side here, left hand, left leg on the ground, right hand is on the hip. This comes down across to this leg, and then you fan up like so until this comes to the side on a diagonal and then you just come right back down. So this is kind of the start of the stretch and this initiates the whole thing. And then right here in the adductors is where you're gonna feel the, the stretch primarily as you get to the very top. So this is the stretch position and it's dynamic and you just go back and forth like this to uh, get like a little pattern going. And that sums it up right there. So those are the nine stretches. 
So give those a test, try those out, see where you're tight, and then um, what you can do is start to kind of get an idea of what needs to be unwound in your body so you get back to optimal posture and uh, flexibility. Again, these are only nine stretches. You have hundreds of muscles literally in the body, so uh, you know this is kind of a, a very bare bones thing, but it'll give you a lot of traction if you do this on a regular basis. So give that a shot. We'll go into week three next week, and uh, I'm gonna give you stretches on the go for busy people. So stretches that you can basically do anywhere, anytime, without having to worry about um, you know being in a gym. And I'm even gonna give you a couple strategic ones that you can do that nobody will even know that you're stretching while you're in public, so you can be kind of stealth and uh, get them in without looking like a crazy person in the middle of like a grocery store. So with that said, thank you for watching. Uh, please share this with friends and family as usual, and I'll catch you next week. And one last thing, I'll leave a PDF in the bottom with all these stretches so that you can print it out for yourself and, and kind of cross-reference the pictures with what you just saw in the video. So I'll catch you next week. Thank you very much for watching. Enjoy your Monday.